Hi there, this is Doc Shin and welcome back to my channel. This is a relatively new channel so thank you very much for dropping by and deciding to watch this video. This is actually the second part of my very first vlog entitled, Why are doctors a special bunch when it comes to building financial wealth? We have tackled the first reason why doctors are special in that department and that is because doctors earn a little later compared to their counterparts. The second reason would be even if doctors have already earned their medical license, still they have to slave away during residency in the specialty that they have chosen to train. In Animagodisha, so once you have earned your license so doctor na ka licensed doctor na ka so you have the license to practice so actually you have actually two choices or two pathways to choose you either go directly to residency training like choose a specialty in which you want to specialize like internal medicine obstetrics and gynecology pediatrics surgery and family medicine or you can go moonlighting so moonlighting is actually also a uh, type of physician practice so you are working in a hospital but the difference with residency training is that you are not uh, under a program so it's more like you are a general physician which is still a valid practice because you are already a licensed doctor so let's tackle the first path which is residency training um actually even if you choose to go moonlighting first eventually you may have to decide if you really want to go into trading or you're happy with being a general physician already so if you decide to uh, submit yourself to residency training so you will actually be employed in a program under uh, in a hospital so you are employed in a hospital under the program of let's say internal medicine so naturally since you are employed so you will be compensated so there comes the issue there or maybe it's not really an issue but since we're talking about financials here so it's more of the concern in this um, vlog so when you decide to go into residency then you are compensated and then you will be receiving a monthly salary so during my time when i first entered residency i say first entered because actually i i have a different story i entered residency twice so in my first stint uh, during residency our gross pay was actually 12,000 pesos and our net pay at that time was 9,000 pesos and during the second time when I entered residency the gross pay was already at 20,000 pesos um, an increase of 8,000 pesos from the first time I entered residency and our net pay then was around 17,000 actually 17,000 would um, sound uh, a little substantial to someone who has not uh, received any salary yet in his or her whole life but actually 7,000 is a little meager when compared to doing a moonlighting stint so actually I also did a moonlighting stint of around four years in the island of Bohol and the money in moonlighting is actually very good um, which I will I will share to you everything about moonlighting in one of my future vlogs so when i uh, had when i decided to go into residency training that was one of the realities i had to um, deal with um, there was a meager salary and then what i did was that i availed i availed of the free dor dormitory at the hospital and i also availed of the free food um, that is to to maximize my salary because on some days sa residency. So first you have we didn't have uh, e-books were not the norm yet at that time. So we had to buy our books. We had to um, although we had our uniform, our coat, and our yeah uniform, but you also have to dress well. So you have to buy some uh, very good quality tops. 
and then um, yeah you also want to eat out once in a while and then you have your basic toiletries too so imagine all the skimping in the budget that you have to do when compared to um, being compensated as a moonlighter so actually this is uh, a little uh, improvement in the face of the life of the physician who is just starting out he or she is already earning in residency but the challenge is to um, budget wisely the money that he or she has and then actually there are some individuals who are lucky enough uh, who are still supported by their parents even when they are in residency so those are really a special bunch right but i am uh, but most of the doctors who has who have just earned their license a majority are self-supporting and some people may have this or even the families of doctors may have this notion that once you are already a licensed doctor, once you have earned your license, so you're already rich. No, but that is not the case in 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 the case of doctors. So that's it. That's the second reason. So even when we earn our medical license, we still have to slave away in the residency training of the specialty that we have chosen and so we have to budget our money wisely so the third reason is so i, I have mentioned about moonlighting right so the, the money in moonlighting as i said is really very good so there are individuals who would earn six digit salary because what happens here is that um, you can go on duty for 10 days in a certain hospital and then you go to another hospital where you can you can have uh, yourself scheduled for duties also so um, that would be another source of your income so uh, compared to residency moonlighting actually gives good money so by the way I, I asked some residents who some physicians who are still in training and some have just graduated um, in their residency training so uh, com I, would, I, I wanted to compare I wanted to compare their compensation uh, with what I received before so I trained in a private hospital so I asked this resident physician who is presently in a, in a program in a private hospital so their their gross pay is actually 25,000 so imagine that's around uh, only 5,000 increase from compared to my gross pay when I was in training around around uh, six years or, or no around 10 years ago so um, that's uh, so they get a gross pay of 25,000 pesos but the net pay is 22,000 after all the deductions from pag EB, from SSS, from PhilHealth, and whatnot. Um, the story might be different for resident, residents who are in the government hospitals because um, when I ask my colleague, um, it is, uh, they are receiving a salary grade of um, this may take a moment sorry so the residents are receiving a salary grade of 21 so that is around a 50 50 54 that's a net pay of 54,000 pesos okay so the gross is actually 59 but the net pay is 54,000 pesos. So, medyo dako sa mga government hospital ang ginadawat sa mga residents dito. But, the catch there is also, you know, government hospitals are really very busy. Uh, so, for in a, for, for cases of pneumonia, so like you would have 400 cases census for, just for pneumonia. And then for monthly census, let's say. And then for um private hospitals private uh, institutions you would have 100 cases of pneumonia that you will see every month 
So, maupo na siya ang diprensya. Dakog sweldo pero hago po. So, sa private, gamay og sweldo. Pero, gamay ra po ang imong kaso nga makitaan. So, when you choose between going to train in a private or a government hospital, there are also uh, many considerations to think about aside from the compensation. Um, I have a vlog for that in the future also. So, so since we are in moonlighting, which I said has a, has a very good compensation, ang problema mang good, uh, for those who are moonlighting, you cannot, you cannot blame someone who has um, just earned a six-digit salary for the first time in his or her whole life. So, ang tendency good, probably mo apply po din siya sa uban ng mga profession na ka nang makadawat o dako nga kwarta. So, tendency is mo saka po ang ilang lifestyle, quality sa ilang lifestyle. So, mas gasto. No? So, probably you might be wanting to really buy that latest iPhone model that you have been dreaming of your whole life tapos magpalit ka o katong gaming laptop for you, kayo maka-afford naman so ang difference po dana, the third reason is that those who are moonlighting may be earning big bucks but their focus may not necessarily be on savings and retirement is maybe a thought far far away kay ang kuan ang focus at time is um, gratification so after all sa pagstudy ni mo sa med school di ba you deserve to pamper yourself you deserve all the good things in life which is actually tinuod man pod kay you worked hard to be where you are right now so, ang ako lang is um medyo layo pa gyud ang paghunaon na probably or sa for a majority sa savings and retirement why i said that because i was also there no? so when i was moonlighting medyo layo pa gyud sa akong hunahuna nga mag-save and then wala gyud sa akong hunahuna nga magkuha og insurance life life insurance that time and then ang ako lang gyud is para malingaw ko sa life no? so more so with the probably with the millennials uh, during this time and age no uh, natay mga yolo no you only live once and then fear of missing out so nang mo gasto pud ta kay na naman tay kwarta mo na ang mentality so uh, that is the third reason the fourth reason would be so sige ato na ta sa residency no and na huma na ang residente graduate na siya so consultant na siya ni take na siya ang diplomate boards and he is he or she is now ready to build his or her own clinic so actually this is this is another time of awakening for the doctor who is just starting out so the new consultant or the new doctor who is now ready to practice his or her specialty only comes to realize that this is a dog eat dog world no dili gud sayon kay nga no even if you have already um built your clinic no di man dayon na dumugon no so muagi gyud na siya og langawon so i i also passed through that stage so I used to have my practice, as I said, in Cebu City. And when I had my clinic there, during the first few months, mingaw yud kaayo, mingaw yud kaayo. And then other doctors would joke na mo na time na mag-ihap ka o, mag-ihap ka o tiki sa kisame. Yes, oh, ana yud. And then their advice is actually, imo yud lingkuran imong clinic. Kay anytime your first, your first patient would walk in, you will be there. So, if you won't be there, you would be missing the opportunity, okay, of having your very first patient. So, mo na siya, realization na po na siya nga. After all, after sa imong efforts, uh, residency, uh, let's say residency, and then studying for the diplomate boards, and then working hard to build your clinic, dili man na dayon dumugon so you know um i would like to share lang unsa ako gibuhat no uh, i would sleep so i had this clinic hours so while waiting for patients actually muhigda ako sa akong bed ah uh, sa dito sa inside the clinic and i would just tell the secretary at text me if na ay patient so 
and then mutak sa pun na siya if na ah. So I would um, freshen up. And then other things that I would do inside my office with that uh, would be magunting ko mga papers. I cut out papers because I have, have this interest of you know recycling old magazines so that I could use them as envelopes. So mo na siya. Actually, I could remember my first patient was actually my high school classmate. No? And then, uh, you know, she went there and, uh, yeah, I didn't let her pay. Yeah, because friend man na to. Mm -mm. So anyway, Mona siya. The first, the fourth reason is that. Even when we are done training in our specialty and subspecialty, we realize even more that this is a dog eat dog world. So the the world doesn't owe you. Maski unsa na imong mga kalisod nga giagian sa imong pagka doctor, um, it is a dog eat dog world waiting for you at the finish line. No, so another big reality has revealed itself to you. So let's go to the fifth and final reason why doctors are a special bunch when it comes to building financial wealth. So the last reason is that financial management is actually not taught in medical school. This is a reality. So I hope medical school administrators would invite some financial resource speakers to speak to medical students and even to newly minted physicians so that they will be guided on how to manage their money. Yeah, eventually doctors would be earning a lot in the eventuality and as they go along their practice. But actually, it's because it's not how much you make, but how much you set aside for your savings. So actually, it, it applies to not only physicians, but for some other professionals or some other members of the working force of our country some may be earning six digit salaries but actually they haven't set aside anything for savings so maybe we just need need a little coaching from financial resource speakers to educate us on this department so if you're someone who hasn't yet started building your financial assets or you haven't even started saving yet so don't worry it's not yet too late it's not yet too late to start and it's not also too early to think about retirement yeah even if you're still uh, 20 years old who just graduated from college or you are a newly minted physician who just earned your license this year it's not too late to start saving and it's not too early to start thinking about retirement yeah um, I say that because I've also been through a financial mess myself I got into a credit card mess before and thankfully I had my parents and my aunt to save me from that mess and during my moonlighting stint I also uh, had this YOLO mentality and I brought all the gadgets that I like and I barely had savings uh, then too and then I didn't even have insurance and then I was traveling a lot so anyway don't worry um, as soon as you uh, realize that uh, this is one what you want to do with your life this is what you want to do with your money you want to set aside something for savings you want to save some money for emergency fund so as long as you have that awakening, you will be fine as long as you work on that. So I think that's it. Those are the five reasons why doctors are a special bunch when it comes to building financial wealth. So I hope you have learned something from this vlog of mine today. And I hope to see you soon in one of my future vlog entries. Have a nice day and thank you.